Welcome to admins.com and our lab video series on Cisco IS 1.3. You can find complete list of IS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we are going to go through new features and changes that were introduced to Cisco IS 1.3. Similar to what we did back in the IS 1.2 update videos, we're not going to go through every single option on the web interfaces as we assume that you have some familiarity on the previous version already. If not, you can always go back to our security video SEC0032 ICE 1.1 Introduction to Web Interface and Basic Config and SEC0108 ICE 1.2 New Features and Web Interface Updates videos. But just keep in mind that even though most of the menu options are the same between these versions, their layout might be slightly different comparing to the ICE 1.3. Since we're just going to talk about what is new in ICE 1.3, there will be no configuration in this lab. For our lab setup, we have our Cisco ICE 1.3 installed on VLAN 32, the IP of .102 with the name LM-ICE1. And we also actually have a second ICE server, LM-ICE2, the IP of .103 that we were going through the installation in the last videos, although we haven't really built the deployment yet, which is something that we're going to do in the next videos. So each of these servers are currently acting as a standalone. And what we're going to do is to go through the web interface of our LM-ICE1 server. To look into the new features on ICE 1.3, let me bring up the Cisco ICE 1.3 release notes. As you can see here, we've got our sections that list out the new features on the release 1.3, but instead of us going through these individual features in these orders and then trying to go to the corresponding page on the web interface, what we're going to do, we're going to take a different approach, which is going through the web interface and trying to point out those different features. And then at the end of the video, we're trying to come back and make sure that each of these features are covered. Now, with that said, let me bring up the web interface to our LM ICE1. Close that out and bring up the RTP session to our domain controller. And here is our web interface to LM-ICE1. And just so you know that our server is already somewhat has basic config on it. And this is including things like policy set, online updates, protocol settings. We also, as well as having the switch one right here added so we can generate some traffic to see on the operation page. And these configuration can be found back in the video SEC0032 ICE 1.1 basic config. Okay, so it is a fresh install with some basic config on it. All right, as soon as you lock into the web interface, the first thing you see is the dashboard and you can see that there's not much of a change to the dashboard except the menu option on the top here that now has an additional menu for guest access. And what we're gonna do now is to go through each of these menu options in more details and along the way we'll point out where the new features are contained, starting off with the operations menu. So under operations, let's go to authentications. And as you can see, we don't have a whole lot of activity going on right now since this is a brand new install. We haven't really configured any kind of .1x authentication. So what we're going to do is to jump onto the switch and do a quick AAA test authentication to generate some traffic. And we can see some lock entry. So here is our switch one that's shown on this diagram right here with the loopback of 1.2.16.0.10 and that switch has also been added as a network device on our I server. What we're gonna do is to use a test command. And also this switch one has already been pretty much fully configured with all the configuration that we went through back in the video, SEC0038, ICE 1.1, 82.1x switch and WLC recommended config videos. And it should also have the Radius server configured already. So if we do a show run, so you guys can see, it's got a triple A command as well as the Radius server pointing to our ICE1 32.102. So let me do a test triple A command group radius and username. We just gonna do a bogus user Cisco password Cisco just to generate some Radius requests. And you can see it's being rejected right now, but that's okay because all we need to see is a lock right there. So now that we have something to look at, most of the enhancement that's shown in this page is known as serviceability enhancement, which are things that make our life as a ICE admin easier when we're trying to work with the web interface. And the first change we see here is the reset repeat counts button. 
And this is to reset the repeat count counters. You will see that as you have more and more authentications coming in, the duplicates or multiple authentication requests might be combined unless you have the suppression lock uh, features disabled. And you start seeing the repeat counts. And, and as time goes on, your repeat count can get pretty large. And for whatever reason, if you want to reset it back to zero, you can hit the button right here. The next thing is if you're trying to right click on any of the field that is available as a link. In the previous version, you see that there's not much you can do, but in this version, as soon as you right click on, for example, here we have our identity Cisco, what you can do is to do things like modify collection filter, which you would click on that. Looks like it's trying to bring up another page. Let me see, option and let's do always allow pop up. What we do, it will take you to a separate page that where you can set a collection filter. And this will give you ability to suppress the authentication lock based on certain attributes. By default, it's set to 60 minutes. So let me close on that, see what other options available you can bypass, or this is a shortcut right there. So if you click on that, it will take effect immediately if you want to bypass suppression for an hour. So just a shortcut. What you can do is you can also copy. So if we have like a MAC address here for your identity or endpoint ID, what you can do is right click and then copy that if you want to paste it somewhere else. Let's see. Do it right here, there you go. You can paste it. And that becomes very handy when you're trying to do a copy and paste, which was not available in the previous version. And another option that's not really shown here is the ability to run a diagnostic for the endpoint as part of the endpoint debug. Another change you see here is what's shown in the authentication and authorization policy column. Just to show you an example right here. It actually provides you a path of where the authentication policy rules are being matched so that way you don't have to click into the detail page anymore trying to figure out what's the exact policy that is being matched by this particular radius request. So just by looking at these columns it tells you right away that which rules are being matched. All right next uh, go over to the report. For the most part, it looks very similar to ICE 1.2 with some of the reports are being uh, recategorized. And there's also some new reports added as well, along with the new features. For example, if you go to authentication service status, you have things like AD connect operation that's new, and as well as the identity mapping, which is part of the PX grid feature. For the most part, the reports are the same. Under the endpoint protection service, it's pretty much the same. This is where you can still send out COA to change the port status and pretty much quarantine a MAC address, although we're not seeing because the feature is not enabled right now. Troubleshooting option is also pretty much the same as well. All right, moving on to the next menu, which is the policy menu, starting with the policy sets. As I mentioned, we have the policy set enabled already and still not enabled by default, so we need to enable that yourself. And one of the changes that's been made to the policy set, which is also one of my favorite, is the ability to copy rules between policy sets. And this becomes very handy when you walk into a deployment where the policy set is not enabled and as soon as you enable it, as you may know that all of the policy rules are dumped into the default policy set. So if you have a lot of the rules created already and when you're trying to convert that to the policy set in the previous version, you have to manually recreate all the rules one by one, which is kind of cumbersome. So, but what you can do now is to copy between uh, the rule between policy set by clicking on this button right here. First, you need to select on the policy set. And if you hover over that button, you said copy policy rules to selected policy set, which uh, we will use at some point within our video series and you will see later as you go through our videos. We're trying to leverage this feature. Under the authentication policy is pretty much the same. You've got the default map.1x authentication rules. For the authorization policies, let's expand on that. You actually got more default rules. Before I think there were probably like two or three with the IP phones and now you got the basic authenticated access. And again, it's just trying, it's uh, Cisco ways to trying to mix everything works right out of the box with minimum config. Some of the authorization enhancements lies under the additional conditions that's available. So let's try to edit one of these just to look under the condition names. And one of the conditions is now available that was not before. Or actually, that's, uh, let me see, 
let's go add a from library. No, actually, it should be a sorry from attribute value. So as we can see right there, there's a C to view A's, and this is considered authorization enhancement, and this allows you to chain a 802.1x with C to view A, which is a central web authentication. If you want to force a user to manually log in using C to view A instead of relying on the Windows Cache credential, and this is just for the additional security. So this is also somewhat um, considered a two-factor authentication. One could be the Windows or certificate credential, and then you're still forcing user to go through the web interface to lock in. Then you can use these conditions right here, trying to match the user credential between the two methods and make sure they're consistent. And also with this option, CWA external groups allows you to query the AD using the username that's being entered through the web login and obtain the user group. And let's see what else is new here. We also have a new menu for identity mapping. And I believe that is part of the PX grid, although it's uh, empty right now. But the way to configure both authentication policies and authorization policies is the same, right? Profiling, posture, client provisioning, trust sets are pretty much the same. So we're going to jump over to policy elements. Dictionary is the same, condition is the same. Let's go under results and the updates is actually under client provisioning. And this is part of the AnyConnect 4.0 support with the Unify agent to use as part of your posture assessment. So if we click under add, you see that we have a couple more options that was not available in the previous version. One is AnyConnect configuration and the other one is AnyConnect posture profile. Obviously, this is one of the long-awaited feature to have a unified client to replace the NAC agent. So a separate NAC agent is no longer needed, and this is being replaced by the AnyConnect Posture module. Although the NAC agent will continue to be supported and actually coexist in the same deployment as the AnyConnect client. With this, we have the also ability to push down the AnyConnect client with any of the supported modules, not just the Posture module, along with the Posture profile. Okay, very similar to what you can do with the NAC agent with the addition of the, the additional support. Let's see if I can go under any connect configuration. I guess we can't really look since we don't have the image uploaded yet. So we'll go into this in more detail in a separate video when we look at the posture assessment with any connect client. And what you can even do here is to have the NAC agent uninstall. If you have a previous deployment of NAC agent, we can have the any connect as it's getting pushed out to at the same time, uninstall or remove the NAC agent. And one thing to note here, it doesn't look like the AnyConnect agent or install packet is automatically downloaded from online at this time. So we're still gonna need to manually upload the file, which you will see in a separate video.